Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss how to write a Python program to print a Fibonacci series for a particular number of terms where the number of terms is entered by the user. What is the Fibonacci series? For example, let us see. This is a Fibonacci series. It's a portion of Fibonacci series. Fibonacci series starts by the number 0, then 1. Then the next number is formed by adding the previous two numbers in the series. So 0 plus 1 is actually 1. Now the next number is obtained by adding the previous two numbers in the series. For example, 1 plus 1, it is 2. Then again, the next number 3 is added by using uh, the previous two numbers, 2 plus 1, it is 3. So this is how the Fibonacci series, every term in the Fibonacci series is formed. If you are saying it in general, so every term, nth term is found by or calculated by adding the result of the previous calculation and its previous value or previous number in the series. Now, what we are doing to do or to uh, write a program or to execute a program to print the Fibonacci series is to have two variables n1 and n2 with the initial values of 0 and 1 because the 0 and 1 are already there, right? So it's, it's not possible to um, calculate them. So already the initial two values, 0 and 1, should be there. Then after that, you can calculate the next term by adding 0 and 1 so that you'll get uh, 1 as a result. Then now 1 as a result and that 1 and the previous last result, okay, previous result, okay, the current result, and the previous result or the previous number in the series can be added to get the next um, result or next uh, okay, element in the series so and so on. So what is the logic here is every time you add the previous two numbers n1 and n2 and that is the current term that is named as the nth term here for example and once you calculate that just you print the nth term. Okay, just you print the nth term. Once you print the nth term, then you make the previous second number, which was in this addition, right? So here we had uh, two numbers, n1 and n2, right? And the second input is made as the first input. And then the previously calculated result, nth term, is considered as the second input. So for your calculation of every term in the Fibonacci series, you require two uh, inputs. So first input is actually the last or second number in the previous calculation of nth term or previous uh, nth term's calculation. And uh, next input will be the nth term recently calculated. So this is how the Fibonacci series is working. Now let us move to the program. So this program works by accepting uh, the number of terms to be printed in that series as input because this Fibonacci series is an, it's an endless uh, series, okay? So it can go up to any, uh, any number, any number of terms and as the series grows, the, the value or magnitude of the numbers or the elements in the series will be very, very high or very large, right? So what we do is we have to accept the number of elements or number of terms to be there in that Fibonacci series as input from the user. Let me assume that it is number of terms. So this variable number of terms is denoting the number of terms that are, that are going to be there in that series. Okay. So uh, for example, let me assume uh, it, it is coming from the user. So input of enter the number of elements or number of terms in the series. So this will be ended by the user and let it be converted into integer by using integer function and assigned to the variable uh, number of terms or no terms, right? That is what the short form of number of terms, I assume. Now, let us declare two variables to denote the first two numbers. So first two numbers are first two terms in any Fibonacci series is 0 and 1, okay, 0 and 1. 
So we cannot calculate this 0 and 1. Instead, we can have this initial values of or initial terms of this Fibonacci series. Uh, okay, just by using the values itself, just as constants. Okay, so let it uh, be n1 and n2. n1 and n2 are uh, denoting the two terms. Uh, okay, used for calculating any term, any nth term in that series. So n1 and n2 are the two inputs denoting or two inputs used to calculate the nth term of a particular series. And initially, let it be let the values of n1 and n2 are 0 and 1 respectively. And if you see, this is a type of initialization by Python. So uh, you can have n1 equal to 1 and or uh, n1 equal to 0 and n2 equal to 1. But you see, Python is making uh, this process of assigning um, okay, two or more values to two or more variables in a single statement. So other programming languages are not supporting this. So in other programming languages, if you want to initialize a value to a variable, so to the right of the assignment operator, there should be only one value or one expression that evaluates to a single value or to the left and also to the left of the assignment operator, there should be only one variable name. There should not be any constant. But here you see, you can have two variables to the left of the assignment operator corresponding to that two values to the right of the assignment operator. So here, these two values will be assigned to these two variables in a respective manner. That means here, the zero is assigned to this n1 and one is assigned to this n2. So this is an important flexibility provided by Python. Now, n1 and n2 are initialized to zero and one. Uh, let us move to uh, next one, right? Let us move to the next uh, okay, statement. So once you got this n1 and n2 uh, okay, initialized with 0 and 1, what's the next thing is you have to uh, you have to accept right or you have to uh, do uh, the checking of whether the by using the number of terms uh, variable or value you can print a valid series. Okay. So what is a valid series? Suppose if the user is entering a negative value, okay, suppose if the user is entering a negative value, then you cannot print a series with that number of terms, right? So number of terms should be always positive and even it can be more than zero because uh, if there are, uh, there are if, if the number of terms value is zero, then you cannot have uh, zero elements in a series. It's not a series, series at all, right? So if at least one element or one terms, one term is going to be there, then it is considered as a series. So what we want to do is we want to check whether this number of ten terms is uh, even less than zero or greater than uh, zero, right? So suppose, let me assume that if the number of terms is less than zero, then that is the end of your uh, okay, program because you cannot print um, the series with a negative number of terms. It's not possible, right? So just you print, enter, a positive value as number of terms, right? And then the positive value as number of terms. So once your number of terms is uh, less than zero, just give a description to the user that enter the number of value or enter the positive number of values, okay? Or enter the positive value as number of terms, right? Uh, now next one, L if. Okay, suppose if the user is uh, entering a non-negative value, in that case, suppose if it is one, okay, if it is one, L if, so the number of terms equal to equal to one. That means it is one. So one means there can be a series with only one element. There can be a series with only one element. So what is that one element available in that series? The first element in that series. What is that zero? So where is that zero now? Zero is available in this n1. So n1 is having this value 0. Just you can print this uh, 0 and leave. Okay, that's all. So if the number of terms ended by the user is 1, then you can directly print the value of n1 which contains 0 and you can leave. So print, so print, um, for example, um, you can print n1. Yes, you can print n1. So n1 is the only one term that is going to be there in this series. Else. Else means here the number of times is more than one. 
okay the number of terms is more than one in that case what you can do is first thing before you are uh, you are you are printing the series okay you have to check for uh, the number of terms which are printed uh, okay okay uh, till now right first you print the zero and one as it is you cannot uh, cannot calculate zero and one by any means just you can print zero and one directly so print where is available where is zero available it is available in n1 okay and then where is um, one available it is in n2 right but after printing this n1 and n2 there should be a space there should be a space between this n1 and n2 so what we are doing is we are using end attribute and this end attribute is actually working uh, by default with the value uh, or with the character space let it be specific actually the end is by default it is new line character okay so for print end actually the new line character okay once after printing this two values n1 and n2 what this print will do is it will move the cursor to the next line automatically but here what i want to do after printing 0 and 1 at the same in the same line the series should continue so what i want to do is i want to uh, make that space as the end of this printing so once this two n1 and n2 values are printed that means 0 and 1 are printed your cursor should be placed after uh, okay in a, in a position after a space right so that is what actually end means here right so this is very very important if you understand the print um, okay function properly then you will know that what is end end is actually the attribute of the print function and or the parameter of the print function that denotes what will be the last character after printing the current uh, string and by default new line is the uh, okay last character to be printed that means the cursor will automatically move to the next line but here since we want to continue the series in the same line after printing 0 and 1 what we are doing is we are uh, we are providing the space as the uh, end character okay so we are just changing the default from uh, new line to uh, space character okay now next now what's next now the first two characters are printed right so we want to have a count of number of terms uh, going to be there in that series because the user entered this is the maximum number of terms that can be there in that series already two terms are printed zero and one are already printed right so in that case what you want to do we want to have remaining and remaining in number of terms minus two terms to be there in that particular series so let us have a count variable so count is actually zero but already there are two elements printed currently there are two elements or two terms printed so let it be two okay since there are two uh, terms already printed let the value of count be two right now what's next so the count can go up to the number of terms okay, the count can go up to the number of terms especially the number of terms minus one okay so we will check it in the program now after printing first two terms uh, okay after, before printing every uh, term before calculating and printing every term just calculate right whether the count is reaching that maximum number of terms there in that series right so what you want to do is just check right um, whether count is less than the number of terms in that series or number of terms mentioned by the uh, program or user by in the series so you until this condition is satisfied you can keep on okay until you, this condition is satisfied you can keep on calculating the new terms and uh, print it okay and continue with that right so while is actually it's a loop that is repeatedly calculating the nth term okay nth term so where is the nth term what is that nth term nth term is the current term that is calculated and printed so now let us declare a variable uh, nth term and its initial value should be um, zero so nth term this this is actually the current term and its initial value is zero so every time what you want to do is you want to calculate the nth term as we discussed in this in this algorithm okay so nth term is calculated as the sum of the result of the previous terms calculation that means the previous term and its previous term okay so n1 plus n2 right just like 0 plus 1 makes 1 that means the next term 0 1 then 1 here every nth term is actually calculated by adding 
the result of the previous term calculation. That means the previous term as well as its uh, previous term. Okay. So that is how we are uh, calculating every nth term. So nth term can be calculated as nth term is calculated as n1 plus n2, where n1 is n1 and n2 are the previous two terms available in that series. Now, in this case, once you calculate the nth term, just print it. Okay, so print nth term. Once you print nth term, right, it should your cursor should not move to the next line because your series should continue printing in the same line. So as we discussed in this uh, statement, okay, at, at the end of this print statement, instead of having a new line as a default, you can have um, end as a void space. Okay, you can have the void space as the end, right? Now after printing every nth term, right, the cursor will be in the same line and it will keep a void space and it, the cursor will be placed after the void space. Okay, so this is how this uh, uh, nth term is printed. Once that current nth term is printed, now what you can do is you can make this uh, nth term as input for the next term's calculation. So that is what this that's what we discussed. Okay, already we have n1 and n2 for the current term's calculation. Once current term is calculated, now this n2 will become the first input for the next term's calculation, and this nth term will become the second input for the next term's calculation. So for the next term's calculation, this n2 and this nth term will um, okay, participate. In that case, how can you do this? You can make this n2 as n1, okay, because n1 is already uh, done, okay, because it was already calculated in two calculations, okay, you used in two calculations. So n2 is now, uh, sorry, n2 is now made as n1, okay. That means the second input of the current uh, calculation is made as the first input and the current term calculated should be considered as the second input. So n2 equal to nth term, right? So every time, so the current result, okay, for every term, the previous term and its previous term. So both are considered as inputs for the calculation of the uh, new term. So now n2 is actually nth term. So both are calculated and the loop will continue. But before that, you want to increment the count by one because count is actually saying the number of terms. Already uh, two terms printed, so its initial value was two. After that, for every, uh, okay, printing of every uh, term, its value should be initialized or incremented by one. So, uh, so that a new, it is denoting that a new term was added in the series. So count equal to, or count plus equal to one. This is denoting the count is incremented by one to denote one term is added into the series. Okay, right? So, that's all. This is what the end of the program. So here and there, we might have required some additions if possible or if required, we can do that. Right, run, run module. Right, uh, here's, so enter the number of terms in the series. For example, let me give 10. Yes, how many uh, terms are printed? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So that number of terms required in the series is 10 and is printing the printing 10 terms in the series, right? So zero and one, then zero plus one, one, one plus one, two, two plus one, three, then three plus two, five, then five plus three, eight, then eight plus five, 13, then 13 plus eight, 21, 21 plus 13, 34, right? So there are 10, terms printed in this series. Okay. So I hope that you understand, understood this program of printing Fibonacci series okay, uh, in Python for a particular number of terms, with a particular number of terms. Okay. Right. So keep on working with the programs and subscribe the channel program of our programmers by Felix. Press, press the bell button for further notifications. Happy programming. Thank you.